Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to talk about the connection between feminism, the media, and the occult. And I want to read from an article from a website that I recently came across, and I will point to it in the description below. Someday, our educators and politicians will be held accountable for turning impressionable girls into lesbians and ruining their lives. They teach them a hate-filled feminist dogma that heterosexuality is a social construct. Males are violent predators, and sex with a man is rape. Millions of gullible girls are falling into a diabolical trap intended to make them pursue careers instead of families. As I have said, the purpose is to depopulate and to destabilize society by destroying its fundamental building block, the family. I am not a fan of Dennis Pager, a Zionist propagandist, but I credit him for a prospective interview with a young woman, Anna Montrose, who described how university and the media made her bisexual. It is based on an article in the McGill Daily in which she declared, It's hard to go through four years of a humanities BA reading Falknet and Butler and watching the L word and keep your rigid heterosexuality intact. I don't know when it happened exactly, but it seems I no longer have the easy certainty of pinning my sexual desire to one gender and never the other. Michael Falknet is a major French postmodern philosopher. Judith Butler is a prominent gender theorist at UC Berkeley, and The L Word is a popular TV drama about glamorous lesbians. Read her interview, and you will see she thinks men and women are interchangeable, and marriage is mostly a tax deduction. She is unfit for marriage and motherhood. Unfortunately, she is becoming the rule rather than the exception. Paradoxically, when females reject the male, they upsurp the masculine role and abandon their feminine one. Lilith, the first feminist. Innocents like Anna Montrose are the victims of feminism, which has its roots in the occult, cabalistic, and Gnostic traditions that displaces God and rejects marriage and family as impediments to free sex and occult control of society. Kabbalah and Gnosticism are the basis of Freemasonry, in turn the basis of modern liberalism, communism, socialism, fascism, Zionism, and feminism. According to this occult tradition, Lilith was Adam's first wife, the archetype feminist that every man marries and then divorces. Lilith and Adam argued constantly because Lilith refused to be under him in the act of love, saying they were equal. This is from the story of Lilith, which dates from between the 8th and 10th centuries AD. God created a woman for Adam from the earth, as he had created Adam himself, and called her Lilith. Adam and Lilith began to fight. She said, I will not lie below, and he said, I will not lie beneath you, but only on top, for you are fit only to be in the bottom position, while I am to be in the superior one. Lilith responded, We are equal to each other in so much as we were both created from the earth, but they would not listen to one another. When Lilith saw this, she pronounced the ineffable name and flew away into the air. Adam stood in prayer before his creator, sovereign of the universe, he said. The woman you gave me has run away. Lilith's refusal to lie beneath Adam is tantamount to the earth refusing to receive a seed. There is nothing inferior or unequal about this. No matter what this text has Adam say, it is part of the yin-yang, the active-passive, masculine-feminine dance that is at the heart of nature. Man serves God, woman serves family. In this way, both are useful and their lives have meaning. But the Gnostic Kabbalistic tradition wishes to overthrow God and nature and substitute the rule of some men and women, the new world order, and its culmination of this satanic tradition. This is why the Ten Commandments are carted out of courthouses and replaced with human rights, which are not God-given, but which are defined and applied selectively. This is why our young women are raised to be dysfunctional and useless, why young men are not taught to serve God, truth, and love, and give women a noble purpose. Love has to be earned. The occult roots of modern culture also explain the confusing mystical haze that surrounds romantic love. The notion that men get their meaning from love and marriage is very confusing and wrong. It is also feminine. Men get their confidence from their work. The notion that we are divine and can love the God within our mate is a form of idolatry. Most of us are closer to insects than to God. I would replace the word love with two words, trust and respect. This concept is more realistic and understandable. True love develops over a period of years and is based on trust and respect. Naturally, we must begin by earning our own respect, by living up to personal ideals and achieving our goals. 
This is the source of self-confidence and attraction. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that with the article for now. But this introduces some of the basic concepts that we're talking about here that I want to talk about here. Mainly the idea that man in his natural state is in the superior position. And this is true throughout all of nature, throughout most all of nature, only in the human realm does the female attempt to upsurp the male and then use culture and society to do this and then to imply that this natural order of things is unjust and immoral and unethical so the man is literally being attacked simply for being a man and having the habits and physiology of a man it becomes a crime and you know, I don't talk about religion a lot, but that, that's outright unholy, isn't it? To punish men simply because they're men. For women to be angry simply because they are women. Now let's consider how this plays out in the media. Because isn't it seductive? Isn't it alluring? This idea that whatever the problem is, it's not your fault. Whatever it is you want, it's not your responsibility. Whatever it is that's happened, it's not your responsibility. Isn't this a seductive thought? Isn't this something that just appeals to the child mind? As if some sort of magical being is just going to give you the things you want. It's wish fulfillment. It's fantasy. It's magical thinking. And doesn't it appeal to the child mind? In our media, this is what it does. And it caters to this mindset and this way of looking at the world. So you develop this victim ideology that the only reason why you're not highly successful in life, the only reason why one doesn't have everything they want is because some imaginary persecutor. And in this case, in the case of feminism, it happens to be man himself that is the oppressor. You know, it's like driving a wedge between a couple that, you know, you want to uh, get together with maybe the woman or the man, right? Yeah, women do this more than men, I think. So it's like driving a wedge. And this is, feminism drives the wedge just between the whole male-female nature. It really does. It actually shames the women for being female, it shames the men for being men, and it turns them into criminals. This destroys the basic family unit, and it's highly profitable to them, and it gives them great control. And they don't even have to be a group of people that are, like, conspiring to get this control. It just has to be profitable to various different groups, and the system builds itself. And it seems, you know, and, and there it, it takes on this truly unholy aspect, doesn't it? Without ever necessarily being unholy or evil, it's just, oh my gosh, it's tapped into this weakness within human nature, and it feeds it. And so it grows like a cancer, like a disease. And so the men have to be made aware of it, that, you know, that wonderful production, that beautiful story, that great movie, that entertaining pastime with a message slipped into it that's toxic, that's poisonous, that's destructive to civilization, to the relationship between men and women, that suggests that the natural relationship between men and women is wrong. What a way to disrupt a civilization. What a way to assume control of the individual parties. So I believe that that's what media is doing. It doesn't even have to be intentional. And I'm going to talk more about this, you know, but I'm just getting started looking into it. But let me say, I am not a conspiracy theorist sort of person. However, there are certain alignments between various interests. For example, let's say that you have a lot of money, that you're like a multi-billionaire, okay? There you go. I hope you enjoy that. You're welcome. And let's say somebody else has a lot of media influence, you know, that that's what they're involved in. Now, it makes sense that you, with all of your money, would get together with that person who has all of that media influence, and it doesn't have to be any sort of evil conspiracy. You would simply say, look, I want to move things along in the direction where I continue to make lots of money. And the other person would say, that's understandable because I want to move things along in a way where I continue to have lots of influence. And then you would start to help each other. And it wouldn't be necessarily evil or wrong. It would just be the aligning of interests. Now let's say that these large interests, they get together with the politician, okay? And they contribute to his campaign. And further, it is within all of their interests to promote the idea of globalism, 
of trade across borders without barriers and the idea of no such thing as a local citizenship that, you know, that we're all just the same and we're all just equal because it is an alignment of their interests. And understand that this is in direct opposition to the interests of the citizens within that nation whose tax dollars, whose sacrifice, whose existence has supported that particular nation. Okay? Doesn't have to be a conspiracy for it to be one hell of a big giant conspiracy. And an individual man whose body and chew, the feminine and the media aspect of all of this, where they have their financial interests, it's like an unholy trinity, an alliance against the interests of man. And it's vast and it's beyond scale. You know, it's, it's giant. It's, it's mammoth is what it is. It truly is. It's like a giant monolith that dominates the future. And it is this alignment of the, of, you know, great moneyed interest, great media influence, uh, the weaknesses within human nature, both the victim aspect of feminism and the ambition aspect of politics and the uh, weakness aspect of, you know, human nature and appealing to the idea of socialism and communism and the idea that everybody's just going to get a free ride and you don't even have to earn your way. Very seductive, very dangerous, potentially very evil and destructive to society, to civilization, and to the individual man. And that's what I'm talking about here. So I want you guys to hear my message, to hear what I have to say. I want people to like, to share, to comment, to subscribe if they think the content is worthy. And I want and need people to donate, you know, through my PayPal donation link. Request yourself a Howard Dare video, a topic for me to go into, and you know, or just make a donation so that I can increase the quality of what I'm doing here because I really need to do that, people. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And please join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.